Hello everyone and welcome to the Street Art Podcast. I'm your host Ross Baxter and today's episode is going to be great. We've got three awesome people um, from all different backgrounds. Uh, we've got Brian Evans, Kevin McKenna and Shuvo Pal. Hello guys, how's it going? <laughs> Just call him Shuvo Pal. Call everyone else their full name, but not mine. <laughs> Hi, I'm Brian Evans. <laughs> <laughs> Hi Shubo, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 fine, uh, bro. Like it's the best intro you can go for. You know what I mean? I love that you said that. I love how you said like uh, all from different backgrounds. It's like we all went to the same university, <laughs> in, the same company. I mean, you know what I mean? It's like we got environment like, artists, we got concept artists, and then we've got Brian, we got you, of course. You go. What do you mean? You got Brian, <laughs> <laughs> production assistant. On we go. <laughs> it's okay. We love you, Brian. It's okay. Actually, actually, I just got promoted, and my thing came through last week. Um, I'm now a junior associate producer. You're Ooh. A junior associate producer. So, so tell us about Basic, that. What do you do? It, uh, it's literally the same job I've already been doing. Um, it's just like I, I think it's a thing companies do where like they'll put you down as like a, an assistant or a project assistant or stuff like that to for the first six months to make sure that you're not gonna like hinder all their work because they've made a poor choice in asking you to be employed with them mm-hmm. uh, so then you get promoted afterwards if you are deemed well enough of course Wait, so how long have you been at ubisoft now uh, I've been there for eight months now yeah yeah eight months that's crazy it's like I was just thinking about it. it's like because all three of you so both you and Kevin are Ubisoft, Shuvo's at Rare, and it's just like, it's just crazy that it's been like a year almost, if you think about it. Like, I, know. I know people always say yeah. it, but it's like, it's almost a year since we finished. It's like, it's crazy. Do you know how much joy I had when it got to like January time and like going back to work and such? I love the fact that I could share in the misery that a bunch of fourth year students are going back to think about all their projects again. <laughs> <laughs> Just how terrible it is to kick that uh, motivation back in. Yeah. I think it's like, like, I don't know, like, well, be, like the best way to describe it, but I think it's like, well, it's actually one of the main topics we're going to talk about today. Obviously, like, I'm going to talk about each, each of your backgrounds and stuff uh, in terms of like what you're doing now and stuff, but the main topics is obviously going to be about student education and really about like the do's and don'ts of what maybe like we could improve on as students uh, like or what you could have improved on as a student and maybe what you did well as well so just getting like that like diverse range of different things but I guess we'll just start off with the easy thing is like obviously Brian you've kind of already described basically what you've done uh, I'm not sure if maybe you want to go into a bit more depth or or what you can or cannot say but just yeah, yeah, yeah. history about yourself sure um so yeah, I went to Aberdeen, um, did game design and production management, although I would say there was barely any production management <laughs> classes involved in that in the slightest. Okay. Um, I, I mean, there may have been like one or two, but it was more like teaching Scrum methodology. I hope everyone here knows what Scrum methodology is. Uh, uh, I don't. <laughs> seriously? In, in Kevin, Kevin, you better know what Scrum methodology is. Well, I've got Scrum every day, so... Exactly. That, oh, that's not the same thing! Uh, but yeah, um, if I don't know. I think it's a separate podcast for what Scrum actually is <laughs> and uh, ag- Agile methodology, but I could do one if you wanted one. Well, that's what um, I wrote down in the book. I'll note that for the uh, future. All I would say, right, is that almost every in- games industry company is going to be performing a form of like Agile methodology and Scrum. And you can go out and research it and such, right? But all I'd recommend is that every company is going to do it differently, and one method is method is not better than the next. It's, it has to be organic for what is happening in your studio. Right. That's all I say for that. But flip it back and I'll add a pause so that you can uh, edit that crap out. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. So where when I was at uni, yeah, uh, I did mostly game design um, and level design. Mostly. I would say I did some art, but as Shuva will tell you, my art was not art. It was uh, throwing paint at the wall and seeing what... No, man. I loved your trees. (laughs) The tree man. Oh, my my, uh, programmed trees. Um, You were so happy, man. I think the biggest thing for I did at uni was D.A.R.E. Um, Yeah, definitely. uh, was the organiser behind that, along with uh, Elaine. 
um, that taught me a lot and gave me a lot of experience. Um, and that was on I think D, wasn't it? Yeah, it was on D. I think one of the biggest things about that was that it probably was the one of the biggest strengths that helped me get the job that I have now. Okay. It wasn't about the the project work or that kind of thing. Like third year project is huge, obviously. Yeah, of course. Uh, but like fourth year, not so much. Like I didn't even send them my uh, credentials for what I got in my fourth year. I was given the job before like my final gradings or anything like that. Like that's, so like that's maybe it's a bit the different. Thing. Oh, sorry. I'll yeah. Do. No, I was just saying that might be something that's a bit different for, for you guys, like for showing off the your final polish work. Because um, I never focus mine on production, I focus mine more on game design because, you know, I'm still in between the two fields. Yeah, definitely, because like, obviously, uh, <coughs> Shuvel and Kevin and I, like, obviously we got concept art and environment art, um, and they're, I would say it's like there's a lot of similarities, but in terms of like what's actually required, they're completely different. Um, so, yeah, thanks for that, Brian, that was awesome. Um, no. Who wants to go next, Kevin or Shuvo? Who wants to talk about their, their awesomeness? You can go ahead, Kevin. Tell us your life yeah. story. <laughs> well, back where it all started. No. Um, <laughs> so yeah, hi, I'm Kevin. Uh, I went to Aberty also. I studied computer arts there um, with a major focus on 3D. Um, a lot of what Brian said rings true for me as well. I think there was the sort of the largest thing that I, I could have done to to aid me in getting my job with Ubisoft now because um, I took part as a contestant and we actually won and went on to win a BAFTA from that. Um, Fuck yeah. <laughs> which helped, <laughs> helped enormously in getting my job. Um, That's amazing. But yeah, uh, so now I'm a, a junior environment artist uh, with Ubisoft Reflections. Um, I'm a world builder. I uh, can't really say much more than that. But <laughs> I'm a world builder. <laughs> no, but that's, that's but really yeah. cool. Would you say, like, in terms of, like, like, what would you say, like, um, the main things you were learning as you were going through Aberté or, I don't know, like, where you are now, like, what would you say, like, the main differences? Um, I think it's maybe just what you do on a daily basis. Like, a, a lot of what I do now as a world builder is not stuff that I prepared for in Aberté. Um, right. And as you know, like, my honours project was kind of, like, tailored to trying to learn like you know how to create assets and uh, environmental storytelling and all these different kinds of things but um mm -hmm. it's quite different when you're actually in the job um like I think you kind of have oh, on you go. i was just gonna say i think you have more kind of a, a more specialized role in what it is that you're doing okay um or at least i feel that way yeah definitely i'd agree with that on kevin like is uh so a bit of context like uh me and kevin work on the same team um, and we have quite a few people that do similar kind of kind of jobs. Um, and from what we see from uh, university towards the industry is like all these things that you're like you're pushing in university, you then become a specialist almost once you get into your set role. But you still need to be. It's basically being like a T-shaped person, which I think we had a talk from a Thai artist from the Chinese room that gave us a discussion on that. Oh, okay. uh, Faberty, um, yeah. like you do really have to be a t-shirt person for as you're moving into your AAA. Like one of the main things like um, that I was really surprised about what Kevin uh, was telling me uh, when he started uh, at Ubisoft was um, the software. And I think obviously this is like the main discussion that so many students have. Uh, obviously, particularly 3D artists. Um, obviously, in concept art, there's um, obviously Photoshop and there's a few other things, but like. Everyone always asks the question about like what software and stuff. So when Kevin told me he used 3ds Max, I was very surprised. Um, I'm not sure what your thoughts are on that or Kevin. Um, but it was like completely like obviously like 3ds Max on my get used all the time, but I didn't expect it to be 3ds Max. Yeah, um, it was a, a big change for me as well because a lot of the time through at university, you know, I was told Maya is the industry standard and 3ds Max is a dead program. Um, <laughs> It's not that way at all. Yeah. Um, with other software as well, like uh, different engines. I mean, throughout my time, uh, sorry, between uni to where I am now, like I've used uh, Unreal, I've used Unity, uh, now I'm using Snowdrop, and you know, the, there's so many other engines that that you would use in, in different companies. I imagine like Rockstar and Rare probably have their own uh, kind of things as well. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, it's. Oh, sorry. Um, no, I was just going to say there was a lot of different things, and it's it's difficult to really get enough experience 
to cover all of them. Um, so a lot of the time you are learning on the job um, and you can't really prepare for it. Yeah. Mm. I, I think it's like, it's like, it's, it's, it's weird. It's like um, everyone always expects them, that, well, expects there to be like a specific sort of path or like exact way to do something. Like everyone's like, not like, I don't know, engineered in a way to think that there's always just like, you need to do A, B, C and D. Whereas it's now like the case because there's so much stuff going on, like there's so many softwares out there that it's now just down to like the obvious thing, which is if you get the process right and you can make good art, you get the job, if you know what I mean? Like, it's like, as long as you're good enough, you're fine. Like, it's one thing I've always talked about in all my videos. It's like, I think there's literally only two things that really make a difference uh, to you and other people. And that's just understanding the process or the workflow, whether it is, for example, 3D, doing your high poly, your low poly, and then as long as it's good enough, you're fine. And like, that's like when Brian was saying about like what got him the job is like the grades meant like, obviously we care about getting good grades in the student, uh, as your student, but it doesn't mean much if you know what I mean. Yeah. I would like on the grades part, like I've spent like since I left uni, uh, quite a, a bit of time thinking about like, what do they actually like mean in terms of value yeah. in the industry? And I honestly like the, like the conclusion I came to it was that it kind of proves that you are able to deliver something to a high standard. Yeah. Like you, you get given a goal and you complete it to a high standard. It doesn't, it shows that you're not lazy in some regards. Like you're not picking and choosing, you know, your priorities, all that kind of thing. And I know like we could all name other students that, you know, they thought like they were the best of the best artists, but yeah. they, uh, you know, their grades were terrible and, I think the question is now, like, where are they now, you know? Because it's like, uh, in the previous, in one of the previous podcasts, I was talking to Ryan about, like, the student education system and, like, asking him his opinion on, like, the same, basically what we're t talking about here, like, does, like, should we get rid of the grade system? And, and like, the straight answer was no, because it would just ruin everything, if you know what I mean? Everything would just... Yeah, no, I'd, I'd, yeah. I'd agree with that. I think grades are a good way to push people to do more. Yeah. And I think one of the one of the best things I've I've learned from from being at university that still rings through in the job is that uh, you get given like a brief or or like a task, whatever the, the you know the, the grade you're meant to aim for is. Um, you can think of uh, do you remember what was Sonia's and Darshana's class in fourth year? Uh, oh, uh, something entrepreneurship. What's it called? Yeah, 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 yeah. That module, right? I mean, right. Kevin, you did that one as well, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, right. That was quite a vague brief to aim for, right? And we end up having to like work our way through and have constant discussions with with Darshana and Sonia to find out what we're actually meant to be <laughs> delivering. It is so bloody true and reminiscent of what it is like in industry. However, like, uh, sorry to get you off there, but I do think I think it was required though, in the sense that, like, obviously, like, I think I think the only issue with certain things that people teach these days is uh, when it comes to art is that it's it's too it covers too broad of a, a spectrum like it's basically like, like it was a, it was like a like people will still think art is exactly the same as like other jobs so you know what i mean like people who don't know art like people will say right so you need to learn how to do your cv perfectly and you have to do this perfectly whereas because of how how it's been developed it's like it's it's purely Obviously, I'm not sure what it is for, well, based on what you said, Brian, it kind of is. It's just based on, like, are you good enough, if you know what I mean? So it's like, obviously, you can develop your network on LinkedIn and develop your social media, uh, but it kind of just, it's always based around the two same things, I think. Yeah, like, uh, we had a discussion this week, actually, with my boss that, uh, like, social media and doing all that kind of thing, I honestly view it as pointless, Really? Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, like I, I've actually heard some stories of people that have been uh, like to turn like a blind eye on certain people because they've just been like spammed on like Twitter or Facebook or uh, because like you know people are coming like oh can how's it going like I really like your work like any chance you can get my job at this place and it's like it's oh yeah it's a very Hollywood esque of like. Uh, kissing your ass to try and get like a sh like get put into the industry, yeah. um, like that's like I was never a big fan of social media, and I remember like was it third year? I think we all got told like you should be doing this and you should be doing that, and it's like no. Um, for uh, like carrying on from this and like talking about like 
getting jobs and stuff. Um, Shuvo, what would you say is like, like obviously there's going to be like a lot of people doing concept art. Like there's so many people, like I, I kind of think like, that's actually the biggest thing when it comes to art in terms of like there's more people wanting to do concept art uh, in the industry. I was just wondering if you could maybe give us a bit of your background as well. Uh, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, so like same, same as the other guys, I, I studied at Abate. Um Purely for for the reason that I wanted to be surrounded by other artists and different mindsets. Because you know when you're you're starting out, you're just um, in a room by yourself learning and doing all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But uh, I guess for concept art, um, yeah, it's a, it's a really niche job role, uh, and a lot of people want to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but there's always this sort of divide about being a specialist and then being a, a generalist. Um, and it, it does kind of come to what, what Brian's saying about being T-shaped, like knowing what you specifically like, but being broad enough to be beneficial to a wider range of tasks that you get given. Okay. Um, what, so you're saying is it better? So is it better to be more of a generalist? Or would you... I'd, I'd, in in my experience, yes, because that's kind of the reason why I got my my role at, at Rare as a as an intern. Um, okay. uh, I think because like I had, I had a range of like you know line art, um, uh, sci-fi to fantasy, um, and they felt that it kind of shined amongst the other applicants that I had that range, like the variation and stuff. Yeah. Um, did you have to like um, because obviously you do like environment art and uh, you do character art as well w was there like a so this I'm not sure what you're like to say in terms of like what you do in that but like do you do both or is it is it tend to be focused on to like one thing um, because it's kind of late in development for the game it is certain thing uh, like a certain type of thing but I get to do other things beyond that but it's mainly props Oh, okay. Prop designs, yeah. Awesome. Like, so when it comes to so back to like us as a whole, I guess. Um, so one of the main topics, obviously, that we've, that we've been talking about is student education, and uh, we've briefly talked about portfolio and stuff. Um, I can I can maybe give you guys a description of what I do, but I've already um, in the previous podcast talked about like my portfolio and stuff. I'm currently taking like a a different route to. Uh, these guys here, um, I'm wanting to get into film, uh, so I've literally just been focusing on um, making art portfolio around environment art that I want to create, and um, I guess I think that the the main thing I learned during uh, university was uh, it took me a long time to learn it, but it was patience. Um, so once I finished university, I was always focusing on like when I when I was in university, sorry, I was always just working all the time and. I wasn't necessarily doing like, like I was obviously doing art that I wanted to do, but it wasn't like targeting like film in terms of like the quality. And I guess like the main thing that I've learned in the last like nine months of just working a portfolio is once again just uh, I think it's one of the main thing I learned from you, Kevin. Actually, was just get highlight the process. And when it comes to your, your portfolio, as long as you can highlight those things, then you're fine. Like. One of the things that would be cool to talk about, Kevin, actually, is uh, uh, what's what's the article called? Um, so your environment that you did for your honors project, uh, eighty level, is it eighty level? Yeah, it's yeah, it's eighty dot level. So like the really nice thing that uh, Kevin does uh, and uh, highlights in his portfolio on his art station. I'll make sure to add everyone's uh, websites and stuff on the background as you're watching this, guys, just so you can follow them on Twitter and follow them on social media and see their artwork. Um, but Kevin, um, uh, the thing he taught me was if you just highlight the process and you do it really well and clear it, like the layout is very important. And actually, layout gets you more views on ArtStation. It was one of the things I learned um, actually listening to a few other podcasts. Um, because the more that you show, the more people are intrigued um, because they actually are able to understand, oh, wait, he's done this. So when Kevin was doing, like, like you, you were talking about world building and stuff. And. That's sort of what Kevin, I guess you sort of did it. That's what you sort of did in your your honors project in a way. Like you made your own sort of like world. Uh, your it was like a castle in a way. Like how would you describe it? 
Yeah, it was a, a gothic medieval environment. Um, and yeah, I'd say world building is, is quite accurate for that because that's one of the things that I was looking at was uh, environmental storytelling and sort of how to use assets to build a, a, believable, a believable world. Because it was like, I think, because I was actually looking at it yesterday, um, it's on, on the final image, he has basically it's like a flat plane and it has all the different assets, uh, like modular assets, and it's a modular setup. And that's one thing I realized that a lot of um, companies that I've talked to are really intrigued by. It's this simple uh, process and doing it well. Um, so, right, let's go on to one of the next topics, uh, which, which is kind of what we kind of talked about already. But during university uh, or during your time as becoming an artist, what would you say are the do's and don'ts that you've learned as a student? Um, like, have you had to change something that you did what would it be? Right. <laughs> I know this is gonna be hard. Be kind of. If no, I'm. I'm just laughing because like I'm not. I was the outsider, like the observer, watching. If we're just focusing on artists here. Um, oh, sorry. Oh man. Uh, I'm so sorry, Brian. <laughs> and uh, Brian as well. So whatever you guys. Want to do. <laughs> I, I can tell. I can tell. Like, I, I mean, I can come from the uh, the the culture aspect because like I have I've had to do a few interviews now and part of my job is to try and gauge people's personality and fit yeah because that's like one of the main uh, things like when you're helping like in Aberté like because in Aberté Brian was uh, always like a I was always in the same team as Brian uh, and so <laughs> there's a reason for that Ross there was <laughs> yeah, that. yeah there is a reason because I wanted to work with you because you because you work hard and you're good at a leader uh, well, thank and you. I think like that's one thing you could actually touch on here about like leadership uh, and about because that also kind of tailors into what you're doing and then like as you go up like the I don't know rank or whatever you call it at work I don't know how you you judge I it. okay yeah yeah so, um, maybe go for that yeah I mean I'd say like going up for the hierarchy is maybe a, a, a different kind of subject that I, I think like if we go back to the do's and don'ts one of the things I I really I did quite often and you, it's easy to notice it but um is it's barely to determine how someone is in terms of them being as a person. It's not like what do they do in their free time kind of thing. It's, it's how do they interact with other people. Right. Um, like if they're just solely focused on like their work and they don't want to talk to you unless it's about their work or about their, their field kind of thing. Like if Shuvo spent every single day talking about concept art <laughs> and when I was living with him, I'd probably murder him. <laughs> you know, because no one wants to, no one wants to like talk to someone like that. They might say like, you know, like Yannick and Shuvo can talk like for a few hours on concept art, but yeah. then eventually one of them is going to get bored and wants to talk about what happened on, you know, House of Cards or something. You know, like you have to have that kind of that personality because I, I think one of the things you, you should always keep in mind is that work is a means to an end. Like it's it's a hobby, it's a passion yeah. that you've explored. You can't do it all the time. Like. You got to go out and do other things. Like, uh, like I don't know. I'll speak for you, Kevin, but I know you do. You do model painting. You know. Yeah, that's true. Um, I was going to like you do need. <laughs> go so you were thought so you were just going to be like, oh yeah, no, Brian, I don't do that. What are we talking about? <laughs> but yeah, you got like you got to be a person at the end of the day. And I know, like after speaking to a lot of the the, the leads, is that they they look for that, like. You, it's all good to be a good artist and such, and you will find that there's a lot of good artists out there. But whether or not they're a good fit for the team, yeah, is a big thing. So I'd really keep that in mind when you're like, if anyone's in third or fourth year here, just like really keep that in mind and try and express that in your interview. Like you're a person first. Mm. The Cause... the job, like it's about your mind and the way you think, not the things that you can produce half the time. Like I think, so so would you say that was like so that was obviously. That was a bit of both your do's and don'ts and stuff. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think that kind of, it kind of that kind of tailors towards me a lot in a way. Like uh, I've always been, like I've said before, but it's like I was always uh, growing up because of my like, sport background and stuff, and maybe it's just because the way I was brought up. I don't know, but it's like uh, I kind of fell into the trap of uh, I can't deny I I didn't socialize really that much during the last four years at all, uh, and. That was one of the things I learned in my last year of finishing uni is the, its importance uh, just for your, for your well-being. And it was like, like 
I've always been up for uh, helping people and talking to people about art and stuff and anything outside as well. Uh, like Brian was saying about it's not just about art, but it's it's make sure you don't fall into the trap of constantly stressing and uh, treating it as uh, work necessarily. I, like I think, like my approach to art, um, and it's kind of the reason why I've been taking my time on my portfolio is. I do art because I love it and I enjoy it, and I don't like it. I don't want to be uh, just doing it for the sake of it. If you know what I mean, and uh, I guess it's been more fun in the last year um, because I'm doing it my way and I feel more in control. Um, whereas when we're in the student system, it's very obviously it depends on what you are as a person, but it's very right. So you got this module to do or you got this thing to learn because we're all racing at, at a frantic pace trying to get to that level that we're required to or to the standard that we set ourselves as individuals that we tend to sometimes lose track of the small things. Um, yeah, I, I would say one caveat though, Ross, like you've got to keep in mind that when you are working in the job, um, like you won't always be able to work on the things that you want to work on. Of course, yeah, exactly. Like you, you will get asked to do things that, you know, you maybe not want to do. But then it is, it's, it's it's part of the job, you know, like you're, yeah. you're part of a, a, a cog in the machine. Like that's also part of like the learning thing is like, it's what Shuvo and Kevin were saying is like, uh, like for example, Shuvo, you're doing uh, prop design, they might change one week or later on to doing environment yeah. stuff, like it could be changing all the time. Um, um, oh sorry, could I interject? Yeah, on you go. Um, kind of what was, what Brian was saying earlier was, I think what was quite jarring when I started working was for the longest time, you kind of define yourself by, at least for myself, was defining myself against getting that role. So like Shuvo, Shu, like Shuvo the concept artist. Okay. But then I know what, what once you know once you start working, you realize it's a routine, it's a pattern, and that even when you get a, a different sort of task, it, it that then becomes another pattern that you you do. But um, I don't know because like you, you know it's. It's, it's something you shouldn't define yourself with because once that take because you know when you're a student you don't you're not in that role yeah. so it's always about what 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 is driving you what is like even if you know if you took away the role if you took away the situation would you still be doing art like mm -hmm. would you still have that passion because you know there'll be situations when you grow up where you know maybe you know be made redundant or something like that are you going to still keep doing art yeah it keeps um, it keeps you on the right track yeah, so knowing your motivations is is pretty crucial. I think. And like, like, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, on you go. Or. I don't know that 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 was it really. Awesome. No, that, that's great. Um, I think. How could I how you describe it? I think. Like well, one of the main the main topics like I guess a lot of people also ask is like, um, do you recommend, uh, people going to, like to like to learn like to go to, university to go to college. Um, obviously it depends on your scenario and your situation, uh, where you live, where you're from, your financial stuff. Uh, but like, would you guys say um, it's it's benef more beneficial going to university, or like, how would you guys approach it? Like, um, what what what's your thoughts? I I mean, I'll turn in here first. I'd say 100% go to uni. Um, whether the modules suck or whatever, at the end of the day, you're going to be forced to work with people. You're going to be given a structure and an environment that is like what it's like in the job. Mm -hmm. um, if you are isolated and you sit in your computer desk at home for 12 hours a day, not talking to anyone, and just developing stuff, yeah. like yeah, it's good. You got the skills, but are you are you a person or a tool? You know. Yeah. Uh, mm. I, I'd say the group project work, whether it's got all the trials and tribulations that come with it. Um, it's one of the best learning experiences you can have. Like I'm sure we've all been through third year projects, some good, some bad, you know? Yeah, of course. Like it's it's these little things that you learn and it helps you shape as a person that works in teams. Hundred yeah. percent in favour for university. Not first year. First year sucks. <laughs> I, I wasn't that overtaken in the first and second year. I think that's I, that's where my kinda like like I just jump into third and fourth year. But Yeah, I ducked out first. Oh, did you? All right, okay. I didn't yeah, I, I, well, I didn't need to, so I was like, screw it. Um, I think, like, what you're saying about the group stuff, like, I think, like, the my two, like, two of the best experiences, or, like, two of the really good experiences that I had at Arbor was, for example, it was actually with, well, all of them were with you guys, 
But uh, so one of the first oh, things was <laughs> 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 one of the first things was, uh, for example, uh, collaborating with Kevin. Uh, so me and Kevin were in, uh, and Shuvo were all in the same class doing uh, computer arts practice with Ryan. And, and I think we all agree it's one of the best modules. Um, it was definitely my favourite module at uh, Arbor Day. Um, but it was like, so Kevin would be on one computer on the left, I'd be on the right, and then Shuvo would be uh, wherever he is. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's a song right there. Like, but it's like, on the ceiling. <laughs> just dangling there. <laughs> but it's just like, <laughs> it's like, I could just be like, yo, Kevin, like, uh, what are you doing over there? And like, he'd be able to teach me something. Like, we, like, we were literally like... When would you speak like that? Yo, yo, Kevin. <laughs> we were just like talking about Marmoset and like learning about everything like, thing about environment stuff. And like, I think that was a really cool thing. And it's just like bouncing off ideas and stuff. And I think like, that's the main thing like Brian was saying about the group thing. Um, like one other main things that I was learning uh, that I'd learned through the group was uh, working with Google uh, with a Disney research project. So mm. uh, last in our final year, me and uh, Shuvo had the chance to work for Disney research doing a VR project, and um, I did environment art and Shuvo did uh, concept art, and it was probably one of the, co the coolest things of the year because like. Shuvo was designing, obviously we had our time limits and it was, it was, it was the closest thing that we oh, were yeah. going to get to a realistic environment. Um, I have no idea what it's like with, uh, like if I was in Kevin's shoes just now, like, um, obviously I've talked to you about it, Kevin, about like what it's like to work and stuff, but obviously I've not actually felt it myself because I've not been in the proper like scenario. But uh, So Shuvo would be designing a door, like one of the main doors of the sci-fi environment and we were like bouncing off ideas and stuff. And you could slowly see how, like, it was developing, and that was like the best thing, I guess. And mm. like learning how he thought, like, because we thought completely different, I'd say. But we then got onto a par that we were like, we understood each other. Like sometimes, obviously, we wouldn't always agree in that, but like that. Was <laughs> Whoa. The hell! <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> that woke me up. Oh, sounds like a car outside. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. No, but it's like. Uh, like that was a really cool experience. Um, I'm not sure what your thoughts are on that, Kevin uh, uh, and, and Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. Um, I would definitely go to uni first of all. Like a lot of companies, um, you know, a prerequisite of working there is to have a degree in in some sort of like the field you want to go into. <clears throat> um, but also working alongside others and sort of surrounding yourself with like-minded individuals. That, like you said, you can bounce ideas off of. You can seek feedback, um, and and you know, to sort of get a, a general feel for working in an environment kind of like that. Um, I agree with that. The third year project was probably one of the best things in Aberte because you got to work with programmers. You know, for the first time, um, you potentially had you know someone to do concepts. You had music people, and it was really about sort of creating something as a team. And for the first time, you know, it wasn't a module where it was just your work that mattered. You know, you kind of had to, had to, um, you know, talk to the other people and come up with something collectively as a group, um, and that was the important thing. You know, so it was it was different. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So no, I, I'd say one hundred percent. Yeah, uni. There's a lot of stuff you know out there online, but it doesn't. Um, you know, there's there's no sort of replacement for the university experience in terms of having like-minded people around you for four years. Like you know, it's it's a really really good thing. Exactly. Like it's it's crazy when you think about it, but it's like uh like what you guys have all been saying, it's like at the end of the day you go to uni to uh, to meet people. Like at the, that's what it's all about. Like I think it's like like I know what Brian you were saying earlier about um like social media and stuff, but I think that, like the one thing I guess I would say is the good thing about social media in relation to uh university and just life as a whole is the connection base um obviously it depends on like i don't believe in the system of uh like like pestering people to a point in which like because everyone knows there's one tendency that i've i've never understood that so many people have um but it's people ask the same question but always expect a different answer if you know what i mean or like they expect um like for example people will say um so how do i get how do i become an environment artist how do i become a concept artist and they'll ask about 30 people that they've seen and 
they probably get normally they normally get the same answer back, but they're for some reason expecting something else. And I think mm. I think the issue with social media is that uh, and uh, just like for example YouTube as well is that it's got to a point that it's so saturated that because there's so many people that are going to give you the same answer or there's so many people that are giving you such a diverse answer or students then get like mind like their mind just explodes because they have no idea who to follow <laughs> you know what i mean like people are like do i go with this guy do i go so i like say i was researching my favorite environment artist and i ask him what he wants and, he, and then i ask another person and then he says completely different like you're like, you're just like whoa what do i do you know what i mean yeah like, i would say that there's no one answer though that, like, exactly and that, i think that's that, the, uh, the problem though yeah, but that's yeah, but that's always going to be the thing though. Like, it's you know, it's life. It's like, you know, what do we do? What's the right course of action? Like all the time. Like we're just trying to find an easy answer. But yeah. I mean, I like you could go speak to people that've been in the industry for twenty years and they still won't be able to tell you the right answer because exactly. it's it changes all the time. Like, but it is comforting to know that like if I do this, this, and this, then I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to be able to get the job I want. <laughs> it's like at the end of the day, it's just like consistency. If you know what I mean. It's like, like the only like the one thing that it always determines if you're gonna get something is consistency. It's like, just be like what we're saying. Be a good like be a nice person to work with. Um, leave your ego at the door. Uh, show that you can do the work, and you're you're pretty much sorted. It's just down to, uh, trusting the concept, of the time, and just being patient with it. because uh, eventually it will pay off. Um, show that you're passionate about your work. I would, I would, of, of I'd add that caveat. In. Like you have to show your passion. Yeah, exactly. Like, there's so many people out there that can you could like, you know, you could pay them twenty quid and they would go and like make a bunch of assets for you. But whether or not they do it with any care or quality is a it's a different story if they don't have passion. Yeah, like I think that's the best thing about going to university as well. It's like you can just like geek out about something because we are all in the same like we all love the same thing and like you're being. It's like what Shuva was saying earlier. It's like you're surrounded by like like all these different people if you know what i mean and yep. it's just like it's so cool to, like you're just being yourself and that's the main thing and mm. when brian was saying it was like um how like how do we fit for these different companies it's like it's not about changing yourself necessarily but it's finding the company that's right for you in terms of like obviously <laughs> it's not going to be like no one studio is going to be like maybe like perfect for you or like well, obviously, you won't, you won't know until you go, but it's just like um, doing it the thing, or doing it your way, uh, and what makes you most happy. Yeah, I mean, actually, this might be a question that might pop up later, but me and Shiva spoke about this last week about how, um, you know, when you move from uni to your first job, kind of thing, like don't ex like don't expect that that job is to be like you know the f the final step on the road, you know, like yeah. You gotta do some trial and error to find a place that is like perfect for you, and whether or not you find that or not, like mm -hmm. you gotta work for it. It's, you know, it's not like you're walking into the halls of Valhalla. It's like <laughs> this is where I've worked for. I've died in uni, and this is where I've came. It'll be peaceful here. It's not. It's 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 basically your first day of uni all over again. Yeah, I think it can be quite. I don't want to say damaging, but if you if you got this mindset where you know. Uh, I'm I'm designing myself in a way that this company will love me, mm -hmm. and then you know whatever happens, you know maybe you get rejected by that, and then you know what are you gonna do? Yeah. Like at the end of the day, they they're hiring a mindset. They they're hiring your skills uh, before they actually know you. So, I mean, I don't know, it, 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 yeah, it goes back to you, you know who you are and what your passion is, uh, and then you know hopefully finding a place that you love. Where you can apply that, like yeah, like I totally agree with that. Cause like it's like what I was saying with you guys earlier is like, so I've been like my pure focus when I finished uni was simple was to make art that I wanted to make, and uh, like you're saying, she was like um, obviously obviously I would in my in my heart and in my brain I'm, I'm like right this is where I would want to be, but that's obviously not necessarily where I'm going to be yet. So it's like being yeah, I mean, oh sorry. No, it's okay. Um, well, I was just gonna say it's like basically it's like understanding, like it's it's getting that realization that you're not gonna get your dream job maybe straight away. It obviously it depends on if you're exceptional in that. Maybe you might have a wee bit of luck, but it's just uh, realizing it's a it's a it's a journey. Yeah. 
Uh, it's, it's good. It's good motivation. It's definitely good for that. Yeah, of course. Um, um right, there's one ass. Well, there's, there's one, one ass. <laughs> I said last. <laughs> what are you thinking about, Brian? Then? Ross, come on, man. Right, this is like meant ass. to be like a PC like <laughs> podcast here. Here, I'm very professional. <laughs> we all know that. Right, so, <laughs> um, God, I've lost trail of thought. <laughs> I'm um, screaming about ass in a podcast, man. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> right, so... Um, I warned you. <laughs> yeah, I know. Having you and Shuvo together is like... Expl- I, don't, I don't you know. I describe it as like... The evil team. <laughs> the evil <laughs> team. <laughs> Shuvo, well, can, pho- can we Photoshop that in a, like, a, a postcard uh, there, please? <laughs> yeah. God damn it. <laughs> Kevin, you should be helping me out. I'm a fellow in 3D artist. <laughs> I'm getting bullied here. Screw that, Kevin's doing the set dressing. <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> right, so, uh, we've kind of already touched on this, but, um, and obviously since we've all went to the same university, I have obviously been to a few different colleges before this, so I guess I can maybe touch on this a wee bit differently, but I, I don't know what, what you, you guys would think, but it's like, if you could change one thing... Obviously, it depends. Obviously, some things can't necessarily happen straight away. But if you could change maybe something about the education system, uh, if you had the power, what would you do? Like, if you could maybe just improve on something like that tailors towards you, yeah, you specifically. But obviously, we have to kind of think of this as realistic and as a whole as possible. Uh, I'm not sure who wants to go first on that one. That's a really good question to give someone before podcasted. <laughs> What do you mean? I mean, well, that's quite a big question, dude. But like, like say for example, like, like obviously going back to like the do's and don'ts. Like say, like so one of the main things. Like I'll give my uh, verdict to give a bit more context. What I mean here. So, a lot of artists uh, would just like to say, "I want to do <laughs> art." So I want to be doing art through <laughs> the four the four years um, of university, and we'd probably say, okay, that'd be great, but it probably wouldn't work in terms of learning like the fundamentals or the things that are actually going to get us uh, higher up or develop as an individual. Um, mm. Because there's so much writing involved in the system as artists, because obviously it's part of the learning curve, like you have to do, um, for example, when you, once you get into fourth year, you got your dissertation and stuff. But if, would you say the balance uh, in terms of how much there is, is is good at the moment, or like, if you had like a chance to change it, like, like what's your thoughts on that? If you know what I mean, or is that too big a question for you to answer? Or like, I don't mind if you guys if, you, if they think it's too much. I mean, I I know what you're getting at, um, because it's something like I was kind of frustrated with going through university, but it seems to be improving, um, at least for me, like as a three D artist, because I decided I wanted to do that at the end of first year. Yeah. Um, and. You know, the 3D tutor we had in the first year knew absolutely nothing about 3D. Uh, and we were actually really lucky because we had a, an ex-fourth year who is working for the Chinese rooms now, uh, Alex Graham. She uh, came in and taught the first year's sort of like 3D essentials, if you like. Um, oh. uh, Tutors and students, especially when the, you know the, the tutors might have outdated knowledge or even no knowledge at all on you know the the kind of specialization that a student wants to go into. Yeah. Um, a lot of the time, I found myself talking about three D with you know some tutors who had maybe never opened 
a 3D package. Yeah. Um, so there was that, but uh, like I said, it, it does seem to be improving. Like they've they've got more up to date software now. They've got uh, Gordon and from Rockstar. Uh, he's teaching 3D now. Uh, they seem to be using like Substance and more up to date things. Uh, they're also doing a, Z- a ZBrush class now, by the way. Like, oh really? Well, they're, they're doing like a. Well, I got told so Gordon's Gordon's setup. It's not like a module, but it's like a side thing for fun. Uh, so they're doing. Uh, Gordon's teaching. Uh, I, I believe anyone from first to fourth year, uh, like how to do ZBrush because like, he's he's really good at ZBrush, uh, and and that's amazing. And um, like I think I think that's the hard thing because I am, so obviously what, like what you're saying there is about it's like getting like the right balance uh, of like what people know and obviously there but there's also those people who you obviously you don't know the expertise that uh, maybe this. Uh, the area that you want to go into because it was one of the things I was talking to Ryan about um, and he was saying that it's it's impossible to please all which is it is obvious like you can't like especially our year um, for computer arts I think I think he said that we had 68 students in our year I might be off by a complete uh, margin of <laughs> no but no joke I'm pretty obviously like um, not everyone turned up all the time but I remember he, he was, oh slide dig I, I remember he was saying that um, uh, he, because he had so many people to uh, teach um, or expl- uh, like he wasn't able to like help everyone to like a certain level if you know what I mean like yeah so it's like getting that balance which uh, it can be hard like um, for like other colleges uh, and other universities like we're, we were very fortunate at Aberté like Aberté was it was amazing uh, and there was a lot of great lectures but it's just like I guess it's just trying to find that balance, which I guess, which we already know they're working on and stuff. It's just, uh, we'll see how it goes, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I think we were just in a, a sort of position where we were, you know, a little bit too early at coming in because they seem to fix a lot of the issues, uh, a lot of the gripes that I have, um, whether that's with new staff or with tweaking. They could, could, I mean, you know what it was like when we were class reps. Yeah. Um, they, they were changing all the, the modules and getting feedback and stuff and, I really think that the people that are going into um, Aberdeen now are going to have much better experience, and uh, that's that's really good. Like, um, I'm happy with that. Like when it comes to like the class rep situation, so like I think I think it's like it's the same with anything. Uh, it's like if you put in the time, you deserve the time as well from like lectures and stuff. Uh, and like like the good thing, the, the great thing about Aberdeen and why I recommend going there is. Um, is there's so much people to talk to, um, like the, from so many wide areas. So you've got concept art, uh, you can talk to like Ryan about that. There's like people who do three D art. There's uh, for uh, for Brian's um, GTBM course. There's all these other lectures that do level design and stuff, and that obviously comes together as a whole for the group projects that we're working on, and that gives you that experience as well, which is the amazing thing about Arbite uh, and one of the main things that we learned. Um, but yeah, it's 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 crazy. Uh, like, well, like it'll never be perfect. If you know what I mean, like I don't think there'll ever be a system uh, that will like fit all. Um, because there's always going to be the people who do UI design, uh, the people who do um, uh, certain game design, uh, concept art, environment art. Like, there's so many different areas in art. Like, even for advertising, that not every lecturer is going to be able to be like an expert. If you know what I mean. Mm. I think um oh no, you go. Uh, I think it is what you're saying earlier just you know, universities universities kind of struggle with how quickly the industry changes with programs and approaches it's like with every new program are you going to get a new lecturer mm-hmm. and um I think I think Ryan's t- talked about how instead they they don't try and teach programs they try and teach mindsets yeah um and I think to to a degree it's, it is helpful in like you know like character building, dealing with like you know like problem solving. But I, I think uh, an issue that isn't quite like something that I've experienced is just the the speed required in deliver like delivering to tasks in industry. Okay. So you know like deadlines at a university that, and understandably they're spaced out. You know you get, you know a couple of months before you have to hand in something. Yeah. But I felt like. During you know you know when it gets to the last two years or the last year you know there's nothing about 
you, you never really talk about those sort of short deadlines. Like crunch time, or like trying to learn like, how to do things like at well, not, not speed. Yeah, not, well, not exactly crunch, but, um, you know, uh, you, you can get given a task that you're supposed to do in, in two days. And, you know, coming from, you know, experiencing deadlines which have been, like, months apart, mm-hmm. and then hit with a task where you're supposed to do something in two days, you're like, Whoa. wow, this, this is what it's really like. Yeah. And you never really, like, sort of um, eased into that process, uh, like, really, in that, that I found at university. Except for, you know, with Disney research, but we kind of a- aimed for those sort of environments to try and get to the, that sort of challenge. Like, I think, like, that's, like, like, that's, there's one thing that you said there that I think that kind of, like, really fits into, like, what we were saying earlier about uh, portfolios and stuff. Uh, and I also want to talk about, like, the Disney thing. Like, I think it would also be great, uh, I think it would also be great to talk about the Axis stuff as well, Shuvo. Um, but we'll talk about sure. that uh, in a minute. Um, but when it comes to like, um, for example, learning things at a certain pace, I think one mm. thing that I think would be really nice to see this at Alberti, uh, and just education in general, um, I think for all artists, uh, is models that focus around, uh, like the small tasks that you said, um, for example, for 3D artists, the main thing is obviously asset development, um, so I was talking to one of my friends who works for Ubisoft, uh, is it Anarchy? Anarchy. Uh, Anarchy. And um, he was saying uh, one of the main things that he said that they were looking for was what I was talking about earlier was process uh, and just being like straight to the point. So he was saying if you could just do like assets in your portfolio first and show you can do them, that's more vi- viable than making a big environment. Like I think... Uh... Oh, I don't know, like, Kevin might be, like, back me up on this part, but, like, that's if you were going for to be an asset artist. But like, if, if you're going for, if you're selling yourself as an environmental artist, then it's, you can, doesn't matter if you can create assets or not, it's it's your mind and how you think about building the environment and the, the logic of the world and how how is things dressed, does it make sense? It's not just a case of you throwing assets into a place and then hoping they make sense. Yeah, of course. Um, but Kevin you, might be able to say more about that. Do you know? Well, like, I, well, there's one thing I was going to say first. Uh, was like, um, like I, I mean, sort of in the way, like, uh, like back to Shuba's point of time. So, because everyone's always, um, like, we all naturally want to make the best environment possible. If you know what I mean. So, if you want to be an environment artist, you need to learn all these different things uh, from design, layout, composition. Uh, player interaction if it's for a game or for film depending on the, the situation but if you can learn how to do assets like say a module like that's purely just like like prop like either concept prop design or um asset creation and you can do it uh that's similar to what's in the industry i think that'd be really nice if you know what i mean Yeah, I, I agree that you should be able to make assets. I, I'm not sure. Like, I remember Ryan spoke to us before that, like, I think she was there about, you know, it's it's not really worthwhile for them to make a module of you creating assets. Right. It's because that's something that you can go do in your own time. Like, if if you want to go and learn how to make assets of different types, then go do it in your own time. If you want to learn the, the process of making them or the, the best way to present them or the pipeline or that kind of thing. Okay. That's something that like they, like they'll be able to help you out on. Awesome. So it's it's, it's probably better just to. So you're saying it's basically that's more you as a as a person instead of like whereas environment art should just be purely environment art. If you know what I mean. I mean no, I'm not saying like it should be purely environment art. I'm just saying like your original comment of saying like you know if you if you're going to be an artist like you should focus on. What the hell is Kevin? Doing? <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? I'm drunk. <laughs> Are you drawing? Oh, it was just, it was just, <laughs> Are you drawing with a scalpel? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just like the original comment on like uh, artists should focus on just like presenting their assets first. Like you're gonna you're gonna be selling yourself as as an asset artist if you're doing okay. that. If, you, if you're trying to put you yourself <laughs> as an ass, asset artist, not as an ass. <laughs> I'm always an ass artist. Sorry, um, that's a whole guys? different ball game. <laughs> whole different ball game. Uh, like, I don't know. It's like you want to sell yourself in an interview. You're not going to start talking about, you know, the th- the 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 last game of football you had, you know. And you're going to talk about 
what is your highlights and if your highlights are that you want to be an environmental artist or a, a level artist kind of thing then try and sell that mm-hmm. but I guess it's, it's different as opinions like at the end of the day it's people get in information and then they try and work out which one works for them definitely uh, I need to go to Lou but I'll be back yeah it's cool take your time cool. goodbye Shiva <laughs> <laughs> 10 hours later <laughs> Just, I'll just I'll just put like a pause on the video and like like have like a like a pop up come up. Um, right. Um, so obviously like there's one other major thing I want to talk about, which is um, uh, Brian already talked about it was uh, his time at Dare. Uh, another thing I want to talk about is um, actually Shuvo's time at Axis. So uh, the internship and the, the importance of applying for things. And uh, I also want to talk about uh, a bit more in depth about uh, the Disney research project, uh, if we can, uh, and kind of relate that to things as a whole. But uh, we'll just wait for Shuvo to come back. Uh, I was just wondering, is there anything you guys uh, want to bring up at all when it comes to uh, whether it's getting jobs or just any topics you think would be nice to uh, talk about? There is one thing. Um... And you see it a lot with students, and like I'm still part of quite a lot of student groups. Um, Start like on Facebook and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> for work, for work. Um, Sorry, man, I'm just throwing these in. But a lot of students are afraid of, of sharing their work, uh, whether that's online or with their peers, um, and if that's because they think it's, it's bad or they are afraid someone's going to steal it, you know, stuff like that. Uh, students really, really need to get over that um, because it's so important for you to get as much feedback and as many sets of eyes on on you know piece of work um, as you can, uh, that's something uh, sort of like at Ubisoft. Everybody is, uh, especially in my team, like the world building team. Like people are always going back and forth and saying like you know what do you think of this here? Oh, this has to go with this other piece. Like you know, do they connect? Okay, and you know people are are, are constantly in communication mm-hmm. um, about their work, and I think that was something. Our year um, in university was we were told one of the best um, and that's not just for computer arts, like across the board for um, communication and, and people sharing their work. Um, but I was, I've been told by other students, you know, their years, the years below and above us didn't communicate uh, very well at all. And I can't imagine, like you were talking about the situation earlier where uh, you and I and Shuvo Yo. were in a lab together and yeah. we'd talk back and forth. And it's something I, I think that students and even industry professionals, um, if they're not doing it, they need to do. Um, is share the work and you know sort of get more sets of eyes on it um, for feedback. I, I, I totally agree because I, I think I think when artists um, I, like I, I'm not sure what you guys uh, think about this and same for um, people who are doing level design and just anything like I like, I I think uh, level design is an art in itself obviously and uh, what Brian does is is an art in itself because in the way he views things and the way he he leads things. Um, I think it's like when I'm not sure what it's like for you guys in first and second year, um, but it's like people are always thinking about what other people think of their work all the time. It's like, and because like you're saying about um, talking to people and stuff, it's um, being learn- like learning to be open and uh, taking criticism, uh, not as criticism, but as construct- uh, con- constructive criticism and learning from that. So like, I think mm. of people who can just accept uh like people being honest and uh people's opinions like it doesn't matter whether someone's better or worse than you um because technically everything is valid like sometimes like when you're looking at something that long or you're working with something uh, working on something that long uh you lose uh, sight of the obvious things and um because you're just constantly thinking about it uh like that step back like taking that step back um makes it so much clearer for you to to deceive you know what i mean yeah so i, I think it's like like what would, would you say would, like would you agree with that in terms of like students who are first starting out are overthinking about it like are like uh, oh yeah definitely um like i said before i i because this did happen in first and second year you know people were afraid to show their work so like oh Okay. People are going to think I'm terrible, and or you know, people are going to slag me off um, because I'm not good at drawing. I'm better at 3D, or you know, something like that. There's all these insecurities, and I understand it's part of human nature. And maybe in our industry, there are a lot more people with these anxieties than in other sort of uh, 
professional areas. But the, the quicker you get, you know, the quicker you realize that everybody is, is just trying to better themselves and everyone's in this together, yeah. you know, the, the, the faster you're going to improve and, you know, start seeing results. Um, Cause that's definitely one of the things that helped me the most was being able to share work on, you know, groups like uh, Polycount or 10K or, or asking tutors or people in my class, you know, it's, no, there's there's no replacement for that kind of um, that kind of interaction. Like, and I think that's like that's like the main. It's like, like that. That's what uni is all about. It's like it is about those experiences, and it's it's the same with uh, online. It's like like when you post your work on um, ten thousand hours. Um, if if you guys are if no one's uh, familiar with it, who's listening, it's like um, it's it's literally just like everyone just firing all different sort of artwork. Uh, from concept art to character art to environment art and there's I think I think there's now like 75,000 people on it I might be wrong but there's so many people on it um, and and it's actually through posting my, like, uh, I think it's happened for, uh, for you as well uh, Kevin because I think you got noticed from the 80, le- 80 level people on that um, yeah I did yeah uh, and it's the same thing with me with uh, Warner Brothers um, by post obviously uh, all the posts i did beforehand uh in all honesty wasn't at the required standard and i didn't see that as a person i i thought like i I honestly thought that i was um almost at the level to be uh in like this the like the industry that i wanted to be uh in and then i realized uh by stepping back that in all honesty i wasn't at the standard yet and once i finished my harry potter piece um warner brothers was saying Oh, I like your work, and I, and I then realize the difference between a student and an artist. If you know what I mean, like yeah, it was that sort of click that I realized. Right, okay, I now know what standard I need to set, or I need to get up to to get to the industry that I want to be in, and um, that's why what, what Kevin's saying here is about like the advantage of social media is obviously you're going to get the haters and you're going to people who love your work, but there's also so many people out there who are willing to help you out and that's why i also do this podcast um is because like obviously like we've had our experiences all different but we learn from each other and um, that's the main thing um i think um especially when you're starting out there's this sort of um desire that whatever you make the, the instant that someone sees it, you, you want it to be like magical and amazing. Yeah. Ra- rather than, you know, get them saying like, um, I see this sort of problem. Like, um, but the, the magic kind of happens when you, when you have something to show and then that you have that sort of dialogue with someone about like how you can like expand the idea or refine the idea. Mm-hmm. Because that way you come, you, you come out with an outcome much better than you kind of perceived before. It's not that moment, it's not that moment when you do this like really, like a, a sketch or something and then you think it's amazing and then you show it to people that's that's not that's that's just that's just your brain that's your input mm-hmm. but but specifically like with the job as well it's just it's that sort of dialogue the, the job is problem solving to get the better idea or the better sort of uh like prop or sort of item um it is really about like interaction and being open to like the new ideas and stuff yeah because you, you can't be pr- you can't be precious about it. Because at the end, like you know, sometimes the thing you're working on is not you know it's not your own; it's someone else's. Yeah, because I think like that was like like that's one of the main like things I have huge respect for concept artists is like um, obviously I'll, um, all it's the same for all artists I guess. But it's like so a lot of people think or the people who are, don't know yet think concept art and uh, illustration art the same, but they're completely different things. Um, so obviously, Shuvel, when you're doing concept art, you have to approach it in a way uh, in your job that all my artwork, it's not, none of it's guaranteed that it's going to be uh, like accepted uh, as to be developed, if you know what I mean. Like, there might be that one piece that they'll be like, okay, I'm, I see what you're making there and I'll, I'll go with that one. But you have to, like, as artists, we have to realise that um, you're not always going to make that perfect piece like you were saying. like people are always thinking about making it perfect and all, which is obviously great because we obviously were having fun in that, but it's mm. uh, realizing that it's a team thing. And I think like, that's what we all 
can totally agree is the main thing at the, at the end of the day. So, like, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's not like, it's, it's not like, um, there's anything wrong about, uh, taking pride in your work. Like, I, I think, I think it's just getting that balance of, uh, just, like, how do you describe it? It's just like, just don't take it to heart. Like, um, people are out there giving their honest opinion. Like, if you're posting your work on a thing that thousands of people are, are, are on, trust me, people are going to, like, there's going to be those people who tell you straight to the point. Like, I think one of the main things, uh, especially for character artists, and it's the most brought up discussion, is anatomy. Like, it is literally the most, like, every post I see a person post, like, a face um, on Polycount or ArtStation, and the instant uh, comment, the first, like, five comments is, learn anatomy. And I guarantee the person who's posted that, like, they'll be like, um, oh, I, I, like, I feel really down on myself and that. But it's just, it's just, like, they're just telling you the truth to help you get better. Um, so, uh, since you're now back, uh, obviously you've been back a while now, Shuvo. Uh, <laughs> 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 What's the new what guy? Does that mean? <laughs> There's one thing I want you to talk about. I, I think it'd be great to hear, um, Obviously, uh, you're, you're now you're uh, an internship uh, intern at Rare. Um, uh, the great thing that Shubo did uh, during his final year at Abertay was he worked on an internship uh, slash mentorship pro- uh, project with uh, Axis Animation, and um, uh, the amount of things you did in your fourth year was crazy, my friend. Like, dude, like, so Shubo did Axis Animation, the Disney mentor thing, and then. Like what other things you did? I'm pretty sure it was like three or four things that you did. Uh, well, I, I don't know the timeline of it, but I was part of the. And then well, I, I, I left it. Like, I, I left it. Like damn. Uh, um, scrub. <laughs> Scr- do, do you say scrubs? <laughs> I said scrub. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm not sure if there's anything that you want to. Um, or maybe you could just describe about um, what you did at Axis and. Uh, like, what would you say was the things that you learned from that? Okay. Um, I, access for me was sort of my first sort of taste into what, what it's like being in the industry. But um, the, the work I did was just bringing in my, my university project and then showing it to, uh, to, to Joe, who was like the like head sort of art director at Axis, and um, Gareth, who's like the in-house concept artist. Okay. So na- now and then I'd uh, show them what I work, what I was working on at uni, uh, and then like now and then get to get some insight on into the work they're doing, how how it is, how is the like sort of pipeline at Axis. Um, so it was like becoming uh, basically it was like learning how to be a professional, uh, or like learning the fundamentals, like the foundation. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, like a uh, sort of introduction. Um, like, I think what oh on you go sorry uh, I think it, it was kind of what we were talking about before is just uh, like I, I definitely suffered from like hey I, I made this piece hope like I, I want like you know you want the person to be amazed and like baffled by the thing you you created but then they're like no well you can change this and this and I was like oh okay mm-hmm. uh, I think that that was when I kind of realized it was you, you know it it's not about amazing people. It's about um, you know sharing and then developing. But uh, like it, it was growing basically. Yeah, yeah. Like I think it was sort of my like first steps of like uh, understanding that part of of concept art about like talking rather than you know just putting your earphones in doing the doing the work. Awesome. But yeah. um, no, that's great. Um, yeah. Like so. Obviously, we've talked about like a wide uh, um, of different things, and um, there's one last thing I kind of want to, um, I guess, not like summarize it as a whole, but it's um, kind of targeting what um, Kevin was saying and Brian, what, what we've all been talking about, um, and it was like uh, getting yourself out there. Um, I wanted to talk about um, the importance of it, um, and the, like I guess. This is where the argument comes into play of like, like, where like where do I start or like, like what am I meant to do? Uh, like, like a lot of people I think 
like when they are posting things, um, like should they be posting things? If you know what I mean. Like so, like when it comes to portfolios, um, we always uh, hear about people judging you by your weakest piece. So uh, the last thing I want to kind of touch on is uh, basically just the core um, fundamentals of like what's required basically. Um, so for example, when it comes to environment art, um, uh, Kevin's talked about um, his, his, his um, how can I describe it? Uh, like what he needs, needed to be uh, to show and needed to do in order to get there. So as an environment artist, you need to kind of like show what you, um, that you can make the work, show like the high poly, the low poly, um, show you can bake, um, obviously there's always the argument about software and discussion but I think Kevin we can kind of agree that it's always been Maya and 3ds Max um, it's never really been anything well it's, uh, sometimes people do use Modo like that's slowly developing but for 3d in environment artists it's always been uh, Maya and 3ds Max and then for your high poly it's always been 3ds um, what's it called Mudbox and ZBrush and the next thing I want to say for environment artists is uh, simply using ArtStation and same for concept art is but when it comes to portfolio and websites I don't recommend using Wix um, I have a Wix myself um, however the way it's um, been received by artists now in the industry is, is it overcomplicates things so I would tend to keep it to things such as CG Society and ArtStation but I think it's just got to the point that everyone's using ArtStation um, for concept artists, um, I'm not sure. Well, we've kind of already discussed this, but uh, with Shuvo, but it's mainly about showing. Um, would you say range Shuvo? It's it's just the main thing. So it's just showing. Obviously, it depends on what you're doing. But like, like say, if you had to tell a concept artist today, like, what is the main things you would say? Like, what would the main things you would show? What would you say? Would you say it's just uh, a range of things? So character art, concept art. Uh, of environment design, uh, prop development, like it's all important, basically. Um, it, I think it depends. Like it's, it's one of those things that it depends. Like it depends on where you're applying to and who you are. Okay. Because you you know if you're applying for like a, an indie studio, I'd imagine they'd want you to do like a wide variety of things. Because mm -hmm. then that means they don't have to hire someone else. Because you can do all that. Awesome. But uh, I guess for you know like a AAA or a, like a bigger studio. Um, I, uh, you know, you'd probably want the specialist that is like really, really good at that that thing. Awesome. Um, yeah, I, there's no like steady, fast answer to that. Um, yeah. It's all situational. Um, and then last, um, also, um, Brian. Uh, Yo. One of the main things, like I think this is the main thing I kind of learned from Brian, uh, and also uh, I've kind of been talking to you about it. Uh, in the last few months is like um like because you look at art as well don't you like you have to because remember i was saying to you the other day is like uh like what's your role mainly entail like i think you were saying something about like uh like what you look for in terms of artists i'm not sure if you're able to touch on that or yeah like... i mean for me it's like on a base end it's like at the end of the day we've got a project to deliver and um i know artists want to produce like the most polished thing in the world um, but it can't always happen. So show me an artist that can do the job we're asking to do and do it within like high quality and a short space amount of time and yeah. it's not going to spend four days deliberating on doing the work, then I'm happy for them to be joining the team. Like then it is the work that they produce no. and how they fit in with, and how they fit in with the team. Awesome. Uh, I think a happy team will always do better. Happy team will always do better. I totally agree. Um, it makes it just makes it so much easier. It makes it flow. It's more natural. Um, there's not really anything else we, uh, we can cover unless there's anything you guys want to talk about, uh, something else. But I think we've covered like a vast range of different topics because uh, I think it's now been talking for an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, I mean, I, th I think one of the things I'd say is like, given the current time, of the student timeline is right now like people should be applying for jobs or should have already and be getting stuff back from them um it's just don't worry about the rejection that you get if you yeah. get any it's yeah. it's a part of it it's 
it's it's a learning experience like everyone goes through it you'll hear like bullshit stories of saying like oh yeah i got this and like i didn't have to work for it it's like yeah who cares like rejection is a life lesson um and with that it means like don't be afraid to apply to companies yeah i was gonna Um, say like apply to as many as you can that you feel is worth putting the time into yeah um i applied for maybe like 15 companies um and I got heard back from like what four, and two of them I got off job offers from. Like, just just go for it. You, it's a learning experience. You just made me remember one uh, other thing. It's uh, kind of like last uh, like to touch on before we, we we finish. But it's like uh, so. There's these few things that are really helpful when it comes to. Uh, it doesn't require you having to actually apply for a job, but. Uh, the Rookies Award is one of the most uh, growing developing uh, awards at the moment in industry. It's uh, an online uh, free uh, way of basically pub- uh, publishing your work in public through articles and stuff and showing your portfolio uh, on this website. So if you've never heard of it, just type in the Rookies Award. Uh, onto is, it made, is it funded by uh, Autodesk? Uh, I think it might be. Um, it's like one of their main uh, places is based in Australia and um, basically everyone who's um, judging it and critiquing people's artwork. So it's basically, it's, a, it's an award system. So you have, I think it's six different rankings. So you've got A, which is mean you're already a professional or you've got the highest um, standard out of all the people that apply. And then you've got F, who are the beginners. And um, basically- It's a bad number, uh, letter to use <laughs> for people. <laughs> But, um, Hi, you're graded F for <laughs> failure, but no, it means you're a student. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's like, like they give you, like they give you a very good, like honest review. So basically, the letters um, judge you um, on where you're at the moment, and the people who are marking uh, uh, your work are people who are professionals. So one of my favorite artists who I'm actually collaborating with at the moment is uh, the lead uh, artist judged for concept art, and his name's John Howe. Uh, he designed Lord of the Rings, and um, so he's doing the critique for that, and it's it's just an awesome thing to apply for. Uh, it's not like it's just free, so you just type it in. Um, another thing I want to talk about is uh, challenges. Um, I've never done this myself. I'm not sure if any of you guys have done it, uh, but um, art station challenges is another good way to get yourself out there, and um, because once again we're bringing back that idea of time limits, uh, quality, and efficiency. Mm. Um, so ArtStation sets um, up constant challenges online uh, from uh, things talking about space, um, sci-fi, um, all different topics, uh, even ones for film. And that's the other good thing about uh, ArtStation is it breaks down all the jobs available as well. So make sure to check that out. Uh, I'm not sh- So we've already talked about 10,000 hours, uh, poly count, uh, what Kevin was talking about. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything for level designers, Brian, or is there any I mean, sort, of, I, sort of thing for that sort of stuff? Not that I'm aware of, but I mean, I did level design as a hobby. I didn't do it as a, I didn't pursue it as a, as a job. Yeah, uh, no, that's okay. Uh, like, I mean, I work in production now, so I'd say, I don't know, this is not for artists, but you will have to deal with producers and designers, but uh, if there is any producers listening, just go out there and start learning Excel and reading about product backlogs. It's, Aberté was great for like group work and such, but it did not teach me really anything I didn't already know or uh, couldn't gain by picking up a book in okay. Waterstones. Um, I don't know, it's, it's a bit developing a mindset, I guess, for production. Um, awesome. I'd uh, say just go out there and freaking apply to stuff. That's what I'd say. Yeah, do that. Get, get also, out there and do it. Yeah. The interview is one of the most important things in the entire process for you to sell yourself on. Yeah. You will be judged heavily. But I think it's like, also, I think it's like, so we were talking about earlier about communication, but it's also one thing you shouldn't stress about in the, in the tent, in, how can I describe it? It's like, people always, obviously we all want to do well, we all want to do great, but the reason why you're going to this place is because you want to be in that, you want to work for them, and plus you think that's the place that you think you'll be comfortable in. So the main thing is be relaxed as you can and enjoy yourself. 
make the most of it. And like Brian was saying, uh, you might not you might not get it, and it's okay. Like there's always uh, other opportunities there. There's hundreds of thousands of jobs out there. It's just finding them uh, and uh, being patient with it. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything else you guys want to say, but <laughs> uh, I think it's it's been a great podcast, um, and I just want to thank you guys for coming on. Uh, it's been awesome talking to you all. And it's been, it's been great. Up. It's been good to catch up with you guys. It's, it's, be, it's been too long. Uh, yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah it's been cool, man. Awesome. I think um, w- one last thing is it is pretty much the thing about um, being around people, but I think finding the right sort of people to be around. Because it's not that surprising that I'm talking talking to you guys about this sort of stuff. Because yeah. you, you guys were the sort of hardworking people, yeah. regardless of discipline. Um, so I think, you know, and like, you know, if you're on the, like, in your own in the room and you're using forums or you're at university, try and find, like, the best sort of people in your class. And not be weird about it, but, like, you know, you know, try, you know, understand them, you know, be, you know, be, be their friends and stuff. Yeah, yeah be yourself. I'd also um, add on to that is don't exclude people because you've judged them. Yeah, yeah. Like I've I've heard about this at other universities, like art programs where, like, like certain uh, students like they create like set like separate groups um, where they'll only talk to people that they deem uh, like good enough to their criteria and yeah, uh, right. like to do that to someone is like. To take out the you know the art or the skill that you're developing on right to do that in general is like it's elitist in itself and you know if you were to do that in a rough neighborhood like you'd get freaking decked like you could probably edit this out ross but uh yeah. like uh no you just be honest with it it's like, it's, yeah it's, you, you just you can't be that to people uh yeah, and it's not going to work in the industry yeah, yeah like like respect goes such a long way like i was listening to a podcast i think was it last month? And there was one thing that I was completely surprised. Uh, well, I'm not sure I was surprised about it, but like, I didn't believe someone would do this. But it's like uh, there was a character artist um, that was going for an interview and he stole the card. The, the, he didn't know the guy's art he was making, right? He stole his art and put it in his, in his portfolio. And this guy was also like... Um, how can I describe it? He, he was basically saying what Brian was talking about. Like he was very, he was judgmental as a lot of people, and because of uh, a, he had a bad reputation, um, and b, he stole someone's work. Like that just destroys your career, if you know what I mean. Like, oh yeah, you're instantly giving yourself a bad name. So just be a nice person, learn to respect people, and uh, like Brian was saying, don't judge people uh, until you actually get to know them. Uh, obviously, just don't judge them in general. Just, uh, be yourself, but a big thing to keep in mind is the games industry. Although it seems big, it is a very small community. Yeah, like you'll go from one studio to the next, and you'll find someone that has worked with someone you know. Yeah, you're going to work in the industry for like what you would hope for. You know, forty years. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, let's hope you no one gets burnt out and crashes <laughs> and burns in five years. But uh, like. You know, you're trying to build a career here in a community. You're not going to... Don't screw it up on your first job yeah. or before you get a job. Enjoy it and be good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I, don't know, I guess the, my last point is um, one thing I really learned when I uh, started my job was um, everyone gets through a stage of, like, imposter syndrome, which, like, you should look it up because it does affect a lot of people. But... um Take a moment and just like be happy with the fact that you got the job, right. and celebrate it. Like yeah. you managed to beat out so many other people, and beat up. get. I didn't say beat up for. I said beat out. You know. I know. I said I had beat out. I, I yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Um, and just celebrate the fact that like you know you made it to that first step. You got your foot in the door. Yeah. Um, it's... and don't worry about the you know, oh, I don't know how to do this and that kind of thing. Like, you can learn that stuff. Getting into the the job is, is really, really important. Totally. Yeah, I agree with that. No, but that, that's awesome. Uh, thanks once again, guys. Um, uh, once again, guys, uh, so on the background, obviously I'm going to include uh, everyone's portfolio, so make sure to go follow them on your art station or the websites uh, that I highlight. Um, 
and that, that'll be great. And uh, there's going to be more uh, podcasts coming out in the future as well. Um, if you like today's video, please uh, make sure to uh, leave a like and also subscribe. That'd be much appreciated. Um, but until next time, I will see you guys later. Um, thanks once again, guys, for coming on. Uh, thanks, Ross. And yeah, thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Ross. See you later. Ciao. Yeah. Bye.